Hello there, Pristine has called it. Belgrade's now refuting it. Now come the responses of the rest of the international community to Kosovo's declaration of independence. The European Union has left it up to individual member states to decide for themselves. So far, France, Germany and Britain have all recognised Kosovo as the world's newest country, though Spain and Slovakia have called the move, quote, illegal. US President George Bush, he's acknowledged Kosovo's announcement. He did stop short of a formal endorsement. But perhaps most critically, Serbia has accused Kosovo of creating a false state and has filed legal charges as thousands of Serbs spent the day in protests, these in Belgrade now at a church service. Nazanin Mashiri is in the Serbian capital, Belgrade, where those protests have been taking place. Thousands of Serbians have taken to the streets uh, in protest at what's happened. It's been the biggest mass protest we've seen since the announcement of Kosovan independence. They've been gathering outside uh, the biggest Orthodox church here in Belgrade. There'll be a special service later. Kosovo, of course, of huge importance to Serbia, not only historically but also religiously. Now, the protests we've seen today have been uh, relatively peaceful. No similar scenes uh, to yesterday when we saw those clashes between ultranationalists and riot police outside the US embassy and also the Slovenian embassy. So relatively peaceful so far, but there is a huge amount of anger here. People really do feel traumatized by what's happened and anger towards those countries that have recognized uh, Kosovo's independence. Now, we did mention that uh, U.S. President George Bush had stopped, f stopped short, I'm sorry, of a formal uh, endorsement. Just getting reports from the Reuters news agency that uh, through Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, the United States has formally recognised the independence of Kosovo. That declaration coming through Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. So another person or another big country, should I say, on side with Kosovo in this independence. Well, Serbs inside Kosovo have also been venting their frustration, though. In the ethnically divided town of Mitrovica in the north, thousands of people have been out in force, as Barnaby Phillips reports. In Serb Mitrovica today, children sang of ancient heroes who died for their country. Angry youths vowed never to accept Kosovan independence. And leaders said they would never work with the European Union. If anything, the events of the past few days have strengthened the determination of Serbs to hold on to what they have in Kosovo. It's very difficult to imagine how the government in Pristina will ever be able to assert its authority here. She said, we Serbs cannot stop the major powers, but we know law and justice are on our side. He said the Albanians have created an illegitimate state through terrorism. Then they gathered by the river firecrackers and flares just to let the Albanians know that this is Serbia. They despise the Americans as allies of the Albanians, but many share the blame for the failure to build a multi-ethnic Kosovo. Independence or not, peacekeepers will be here for years, keeping two communities apart. Barnaby Flutz there with the protests in Pristina, though more joy and celebrations for thousands of Kosovars. Alan Fisher went to meet the newest member of the newly independent nation. This is citizen number one, the first baby born in the new independent state of Kosovo. And her name, Parvarsia, independence. She was born just minutes after the dramatic announcement that Kosovo was finally breaking from Serbia and going on its own. For her mother, 25-year-old Lumtaria Sopa, it's a first baby and an extra special one too. It's an indescribable feeling to know that the very first baby born in our new independent Kosovo is mine. The head of delivery at the hospital says it was a wonderful moment for the mother, the hospital and the country. It is uh, too special to have first ba baby born in my department, in our department, in independent Kosovo. And it's especially 
Uh, I work here three, uh, 30 years ago, but his first baby who is born in Independence, Kosovo. For Parvasia, like every other baby, the future is perhaps a little uncertain. But what is clear is that she will grow up as a citizen of the new independent state of Kosovo. Newborn is the name of a special statue which has been unveiled to mark the birth of this new nation. Here in the centre of Pristina, people can add their name to history. Kosovo is marking its independence with a public holiday. The streets are quieter after the massive street parties which followed the announcement from Hashim Tachi. But people are still basking in the glow of their newly created citizenship. I woke up this morning with joy because I'm happy in the new state of Kosovo. We have waited for so long for this. I'm very, very happy. Today we're not orphans anymore. We've got our own state and that's why I'm happy. After the anticipation and excitement, Kosovo must now wait. Countries will soon decide if they recognize the new state or don't. But enough have indicated that it won't be left a friendless orphan. Alan Fisher, Al Jazeera, Pristina. We're going to move to our other main story of the day now. After the bloodshed, the bombs, the assassination of Benazir Bhutto, Pakistan, a country of almost 160 million people, has finally gone to the polls. Voting closed just over three hours ago, but it could be some time yet before we know exactly who's won and which party will lead the new government in the country. With more, it's Tim Friend. Now the counting begins. After nine hours of voting, the ballot papers are turned out of their boxes. No one knows yet exactly what story they'll tell. Well, the voting may be over, but a new round of political wrangling is only just about to begin as each party weighs up their successes and decides whether they can go it alone and form a government or whether they need to go into coalition with their rivals. For some, the celebrations have already begun. There's no official overall result yet, but word of local successes spread fast. <laughs> President Musharraf cast his vote, sensing this election was a referendum on his time in power. As far as I'm concerned, I strongly believe that this uh, politics of confrontation must give way to politics of reconciliation. Not in anyone's personal interest, in the interest of Pakistan. We must come out of this confrontationist approach and get into a conciliatory mode. The opposition leaders Nawaz Sharif and Asif Ali Zadari were also early voters. They have high hopes of success. But this election also has international ramifications and the United States is here watching the result carefully. This is uh, about Pakistan and the government's relationship with its own people. And it's about Pakistan's ability to show the world that it has a credible election and therefore a credible government. But violence has marred this election. In Lahore, gunmen opened fire on supporters of Nawaz Sharif, killing two and wounding 12. It wasn't the only incident. And the threat of trouble has prevented many from voting. The final turnout could be very low. <laughs> These voters were in no doubt who would win. Nawaz Sharif and the PPP. Uh, yes. yes, you want them to win? Of course. Of course. Musharraf, go. I want peace. I want peace. The People's Party, now led by Ms. Bhutto's widower, believes it will receive millions of sympathy votes following her assassination last December. It was the other way. He told me she sacrificed her life for the poor people. Definitely more people will vote for us. As party workers headed home, no one really believed that this election alone would settle Pakistan's political uncertainty. Tim Friend, Al Jazeera, Islamabad. And let's get more now from Sahel Rahman. He is live in Islamabad for us this evening. So. Thank you, Kamal. Yes, the election results are slowly coming in. We expect a plethora of those to uh, begin pouring in. In about an hour's time, we'll be bringing you those results on Al Jazeera. But joining me now live on the phone from Larkana is the niece of the late and assassinated former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, Fatima Bhutto. Ms Bhutto, thank you for joining us live on Al Jazeera. Your late auntie was very concerned and critical of the election commission about ignoring her warnings about vote rigging. Can you tell me what you've seen on election day and were those concerns justified? 
No, not really. What we've seen today, and we've been out on the road since 7 in the morning, is extensive and overwhelming rigging by the PPP. We've encountered ballot stuffing. We've encountered incomplete voter lists. We have encountered women using fake IDs.